Hello folks, this is Soil speaking. You're listening to another game for Teamfight Tactics. This is taken from a double up game played together with JDPL Grillo. And in this game, we're going to be looking at another one of the traits I haven't really featured up to this point in time. And that is the trick shot trait. Yeah, trick shot. One that I hadn't really played at all on the PBE. It was in a pretty weak position throughout the testing period. However, now that the game is out, we are on the release patch if you're watching this. Uh, actually, we're on a hot fixed version of the release. Uh, release version. They made a couple very small changes. But uh, it turns out that uh, one of the trickshot units in particular, Bard, is uh, apparently very, very strong if you itemize in the correct way. So we're going to head in that direction in this game, try to explore some of the gameplay with the trickshot units. All right, now we did not like any of these options other than Anvil Buffet. I guess Anvil Buffet is okay. Both Grill and I really hate Wandering Trainers, which gives you three completely random emblems to start the game. You can just win or lose the game based on what's that, uh, what's on those emblems. And then the other option is Crab Rave, which I don't really like very much either. Just this one pays out so much additional loot. It just accelerates everybody's economy to kind of a crazy extent. So one of my biggest complaints with this set is it just feels like there's ridiculous amounts of loot in this set. And economy is accelerated by everyone to such a crazy degree in game after game after game here. It just definitely feels like in every single game, it's very easy to get to level nine and uh, pretty frequently even getting to level 10 because you're just getting gold after gold after gold after gold. Uh, in addition, because you know you have the initial portals, which if you get something like Crab Rave, that gives you a lot of additional econ. Then you have augments, which often give you additional econ. And then now you have encounters, which also very frequently give additional econ. So it's a little... Uh, it's a little bit frustrating to say the least. If you just want to play like an actual game of Team Fight Tactics and not like Slot Machine Simulator, which is what a lot of these uh, matches feel like. In any case, though, I was planning when uh, I had this initial opener. I was planning on playing into uh, early snipers here because I have two out of three Cogmals. I also have the Caitlyn. Now I actually have two out of three Kates as well. So I have a lot of the pieces that one would typically play if you're going to do this. Uh, if you're going to do like the COG reroll, I believe the previous video I posted on YouTube was a COG reroll game. I wasn't planning on rerolling for COG because I thought, um, you know, with this being Crab Rave, everyone's going to get so much economy. It really is a rush to level nine and try to play lots of legendary units game. But I thought I could play snipers through like the early and mid game, use that to kind of stabilize my board and then look to, tra uh, to, to transition into something else after that. By the way, look how much gold we get here. And we have, uh, what, 10 gold already plus the normal item components. Yeah, it's it's a lot more income than you're usually getting at this stage of the game. But uh, then I get something that completely redirects the course of my game. And then that is going to turn out to be what I get for the initial augment here. And I get this lucky ricochet. Trick shots bounce one additional time for 40% of original damage. So this is what the trick shot treat does is you get the ricochets. It's uh, basically a remake of one of the traits from way back in the day. By the way, Venerable Piggy Bank is kind of interesting too. Uh, <laughs> you can generate Econ while playing Exalted Chance, but no, we're gonna do Lucky Ricochet. Trick a shot should bounce an additional time. And uh, by the way, it actually gives me a Teemo, and I believe it gives me a Sivir as well. It definitely gave me a Teemo. And by the way, the uh, Augment description does not say that it gives you a Teemo, which is kind of wild right there. But uh, it did in fact give me a Teemo, and uh, I'm gonna have the Trick Shot trait in play. So what does this trait do? As I said, it's basically a trait that came back from set four sharpshooter trait. Uh, sharpshooter trait would be, you know, your sharpshooters, their ability would bounce and hit an additional target. And that's essentially what Trickshot does as well. Not really sure why they renamed it because it basically does the same thing. Here's the formal ability description. Trickshot's ability is ricochet. Each ricochet deals a percentage of the previous bounce's damage. So the ability, oh, interesting. Okay, so it's not their auto attacks, it's their ability. Ooh, okay, gotcha. I actually thought it was their auto attack. So I guess that's what's different than Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter was their auto attack. So this one, it's the abilities ricochet. Uh, at Trickshot 2, you get one ricochet, deals 40% of previous damage, so a little less than half. At Trickshot 4, it ricochets twice, two ricochets, uh, that does 60% of the previous damage. But Remember my augment, my trick shot's abilities ricochet an extra time. So with trick shot two, they ricochet twice. If I can get up to tr uh, trick shot four, they will ricochet three times. And so this augment kind of takes this trait, which is, you know, decent, but not amazing. And it kind of tips it over into overpowered status, in particular when paired with Bard, who is seen as being uh, kind of overtuned in this particular patch. They actually did not adjust his numbers downward in the little micro patch that they did, the little hotfix patch. 
But uh, I was able to hit two-star Teemo, so that's pretty good. I got one Teemo in my store, another one from picking this Augment. Again, not documented, so hooray for that. But then uh, I was able to find another one this time. And so if you watch closely, Teemo's little dumpling or whatever it is that he tosses will bounce to multiple additional targets. It's not going to be enough to save me in that fight because I got reinforced on by someone who's already level 5. Uh, I would have won that round for sure against the other player, but uh, not enough to beat the other board. But uh, still, I only lose one HP. It's not too bad, and uh, yeah, we're just kind of kind of rolling here. So I'm gonna be looking for the key units. I'm gonna look for are Bard and Tom Kench, and the uh, board that plays around this typically plays around those units. By the way, this is another store, another Riven, and another Nico. Not bad. It's gonna cost me some econ, but not bad. Not bad at all. I'm planning on transitioning out of the Nico. By the way, uh, I'm gonna try to transition into the. Uh, the, what's what she called, the um, Riven, that, by, by the way, that graphic does not look anything like Riven, <laughs> I keep getting thrown off by that, but I'm uh, going to transition to the Riven, and then we're going to need to play another unit, so we're going to pick up the Soraka as well, uh, basically moving out of the Nico and moving into Soraka instead, because Soraka is going to fit better with this board, uh, and that's because we're going to be playing into the Altruist trait as well, which I'll talk more about, we're going to play into Storyweaver and Altruist, we're actually going to hit all three of Riven's traits, Storyweaver, Altruist, and Bruiser, get them all in play, but there'll be time to talk about that later on, so anyway, like I said, the Trick Shots, abilities will ricochet uh, normally with trick shot 2 they'd ricochet once but they ricochet twice because we have that augment that causes them to ricochet an additional time each time they bounce they do less damage but still you uh, have the ability to hit multiple targets at once this is more impactful on someone like Timo who has low mana cost Timo's mana cost is only 20 uh, it's only 30 mana cost on his ability, so he's going to cast pretty frequently. I would actually love to get a blue buff on him, because since I've hit Teemo 2-star this early, and I have Grillo to help me look for more Teemos, I actually have pretty decent odds to hit Teemo 3-star in this game. So I would very much like to get that tier and try to work towards a blue buff for Teemo. But uh, as it turns out, I'm not going to have the opportunity to get this tier. It's going to get snapped up here by one of these other players, and there it goes. I remember this from the game, so I'm going to have to try and take some other items here instead. I could take some more frontline here, potentially, but I decide I'll just grab the sword instead. Now, the big thing you want if you're playing Bard, which is what this team comp is going to go into, is you really want attack speed. The ideal itemization for Bard is to get double Rage Blades and a Gun Blade, so that's a little bit better of a setup there, but uh, that is not going to happen here because um, I have no opportunity to get bows. Instead, I've got this potential for an Infinity Edge, which is not a good item on any of the units here, except it's okay on Sivir. It's not a great, I guess it's a decent Sivir item. It's just Sivir's a one cost, and she's not currently re-rolled. So, um, yeah, I'll put it on. I'll put it on Sivir for right now, uh, with the intention of transferring over to the four cost Trick Shot, which is Kaisa later on. Trick Shot's kind of interesting as a trait. It's very simplistic in terms of what units it has. It has a one cost unit, Sivir. It has a two cost unit, Teemo. It has a three cost unit, Bard. A four cost unit, Kai'Sa. And then a five cost unit in the form of Zaya. Although Zaya has been getting very little play in this set so far because Rakan is just so much better. And uh, Zaya and Rakan are the same unit. It's just you get Rakan if you play it in the front two rows and Zaya if you play it in the back two rows. So uh, Rakan is just so much better than Zaya that everybody's been playing Rakan instead. But maybe at some point people will play the Zaya instead. Uh, so far, ever since that one round where I got reinforced on super early, I've been doing pretty well since then. I'm also going to get a random three-star one-cost unit in the form of a three-star Malphite. So I was like, uh, okay. I mean, I guess I can take that. Sure, why not? And then over there, Grillo has gotten a random... <laughs> Restart Darius. As far as what Grillo's doing with this board, he actually took the Shen carry augment. This is the one that turns gives Shen uh, like an extra range and turns him into a carry unit instead of a tank. So we're looking for Shens to try to make uh, Shen 3-star for his board. And he's also going to be rolling for units that go along with Shen. So he's going to look for Aatrox, he's going to look for Yorick. Those are other two-cost units that share some of the traits with Shen. And uh, just going to try to 3-star them and go from there. And that was the idea. So that's why I'm going to grab this Yorick here with the intention of sending that over to his board. Uh, Shen is the highest priority, but if we can't find Shen, then hitting, uh, sending him like a Yorick. I believe that that would make Yorick 2-star for his board. Would also be pretty nice. Now, if you're wondering about the positioning in the back row there, 
Why is everybody standing next to Sivir? Well, this is because Sivir's ability grants attack speed to the two units that stand next to her when she casts. I believe it's 25% attack speed for a couple seconds. So that's why Teemo and Soraka are standing next to her. Now, the downside is this clumps us up. So if there's area of effect abilities, like big things that hit in a clump, I am more vulnerable. But there's not a lot of them in the early game. And that attack speed bonus is kind of nice. So I don't mind picking that up. By the way, also some Kabu Coast here. Uh, I, in, the intention is to play Bruiser Frontline, at least for the early early game here and that's because I want to run Riven and I want to run Tom Kench and then I can decide where to go from there. Uh, long term I could look to try to go up to four bruisers although that's not great for the late game. It's decent, not great. Or alternately could try to pick up some wardens. It's not uncommon for this board also to pick up a uh, Nautilus and then pick up another warden to pair with Nautilus because you want uh, Nautilus is not bad so you can get um, mythic trait in. We're going to have Bard who's a mythic unit and then we're also going to have Tom Kench who's a mythic unit and then I'm getting some uh, more frontline units here but look at these items I get and then I get ugh, not quite what I'm looking for. Uh, I do get the send back so I can go ahead and send the uh, Yorick over there to Grillo so I will go ahead and look to do that any second now. Uh, I was just confirming that he did want this unit, and he said yes. And then I also can pick up the Thresh here. Uh, at least I do find a Tom Kench, so that's good. I don't mind that. I'll go ahead and level to play this unit. That'll put Bruiser Trait in play. And then I had the items for a potential Gargoyle Stone Plate. So I was like, all right, I'll go ahead and do that. I don't love Gargoyles, but Tom is going to be the main tank, and I think it'll actually be pretty decent on him. So I would like to get some more health on top of that. But uh, I made the Sunfire. I made the Gargoyles. Both of those are kind of early game items. They're not amazing in terms of scaling to the late game, but I'm still reasonably happy with them. The downside is I didn't get any bows, and I didn't get any rods and I didn't get any tiers, which was all stuff I was looking for. I ended up getting more frontline, so not quite what I wanted there. Uh, I think I would have done better to get some of those things. I really need bows if I'm going to play bard. Like, I need bows pretty badly. And then I need at least one or two rods so I can look to make rage blades out of them. By the way, I was going to lose this round, but then <coughs> Grillo comes over. And uh, his board is very timely in rescuing me. We actually get reinforced that the other person's partner comes over as well. But it's still enough for us to win this round. I'm glad I won that because um, I had leveled to six to try to preserve win streak, and I would not have won that round otherwise, so that's pretty good. All right, look at this. Oof, we're going to get a Prismatic, which is not what I'm looking for here, not what I wanted. I'm looking at the different options. I thought about Jeweled Lotus because the entire team getting 40% crit chance and abilities having the chance to crit would be pretty nice for my team, but I already made an Infinity Edge, so I decided I would not go that route because I already had an Infinity Edge, which already lets abilities crit. Then I'm going to level and play. Uh, I get the plus one team size because I end up taking that for my Prismatic. And uh, I get to play Zyra, which is going to put Story Weaver trait in play. So Story Weaver trait is the trait that gives you an additional unit, and that's how the... Uh, every set basically has one of these. As you play more units in the trait, you get like an additional unit and they get stronger. We've had things like cultists in the past. We've had things like innovators in the past. Lots of stuff like that. Uh, in this set, Story Weaver is the ability, is the trait that does that. Uh, you get to put Kale on your board. As you dive deeper into the trait, Kale gets stronger and you can try to go vertical Story Weaver to make Kale really strong. If you can actually get up to Story Weaver 10, which requires three Story Weaver emblems, uh, then it's like an auto win. Kale ascends and she just like kills the entire board instantly. So uh, that's a little bit unlikely to happen here. And in fact, that's not my plan for this game. I'm not going vertical Story Weaver. I'm playing Story Weaver as a splash trait just because I want to play some of the Story Weaver units anyway. I'm going to be playing uh, Sivir because I want to do four trick shots and I need to play Sivir to get that. If I'm not playing Sivir, then I need to find uh, Zaya and she's a five cost. So it's going to be hard to play four trick shot without, uh, without having Sivir in there. And if I'm going to play Sivir, I might as well look to play a unit like the uh, Riven because I need to play Bruiser Trait anyway for Tom Kent. So I might as well play Riven as well to put Bruiser Trait in. And then I need one more unit. Uh, then only one more unit unlocks Kale. Uh, in which case I can play something like Zoe or I could play something like Zyra. Uh, I'm going to opt to play Zoe for right now. The unit I really want to play though is I want to play uh, Galio. He is also a Bruiser. He is also Bruiser Story Weaver. So if I play Sivir, who I need anyway, and then Riven Galio, that gets me the Story Weaver trait and that unlocks Kale. Uh, so until I can actually find Galio, I'll play the uh, Zoe over there. Now I did make one mistake when it came to playing Kale is you can get the ability when you put Kale in play you have the option to choose one of several different abilities uh, for Kale and uh, you get to choose an additional one each time you unlock a higher tier of Story Weaver traits. So you get to pick a supportive effect on Story Weaver 3 and then a, a combat effect on Story Weaver 5 and 7. 
um, is the way that that one works out. Now, I took the one that gives additional ability power to the units that are near Kale, and it gives... So it, it's not, not trivial. I think that they get like 20... Uh, 20 ability power or something like that for all the units that are Neil Kale. But uh, this was good for the immediate game, but it was kind of bad for the long term. By the way, I would love that Kaisa with a tier. Kaisa would give me four trick shots that I could play. Or actually, no, three trick shots. I still haven't found Bard yet. Uh, and then the tier would be nice to try to get a blue buff on Teemo so he casts more often, but uh, that does not end up happening, unfortunately. So I'm left to pick here. Uh, I can try to take another sword. I could try to take the rod here. I decide I want a Tom Kench because I'm trying to three-star Tom Kench. So that's going to be more swords, and that's going to make it a little tougher to... Um, again, I really need bows for Bard. I don't really have bows thus far. But uh, it is, in the short run, going to make it so Sivir hits a little bit harder. And it also gets me another Tom Kench. So as I said, I want to get nine Tom Kenches. This gets me up to two out of nine. And then I'm going to get sent a Thief's Glove here on the gift round from Grillo. And then he's going to send me a Bard as well. So that's pretty nice. So I'm happy to do that. I think I'm going to transition out of the Malphite. So I'm going to move my tank items over to the Tom Kench. And then I'm also going to put Tom on the board. And now I just need to get one more um, need to get one more trick shot in play to play four trick shot. But my front line is definitely a little bit sketchy here. Alrighty, so looking pretty good. I've got a number of the pieces in play. Uh, well, to finish the point about Kale, what I actually meant for Kale is uh, I wanted to have it in a situation where uh, Kale, instead of giving ability power to your team, you can also have it so that she um, shreds the armor and magic resistance of the enemy team. And, and that is the Kale version that's best to play when you're using her as a splash unit. If you're playing Vertical Story Weaver, you typically want the stuff that allows Kale to be a carry which is generally the ones that give her uh, stacking attack speed or additional ability power. But uh, she also has an option that just shreds enemy armor and magic resistance. That is the green option. She has the red or she has the blue one right now. Um, and uh, that's what I probably should have taken in this game because I think that that would have been better to have uh, her shredding armor and MR because I don't really have an armor or MR shred on my board right now. And as it turns out, I wouldn't really get them throughout this game. So having Kale just debuff enemy armor and magic resistance would have been pretty pretty useful, particularly when I was hitting uh, really strong enemy tanks as the game went on. So if I were to do this over again, that's one of the things that I would have looked to do. Okay, so for the moment, um, my team has a lot of damage, especially with me having three trick shots in who all have their abilities bounce three times on use. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty sketchy on frontline right now. I really would like to hit two-star Tom Kench if at all possible. So because I'm on the big win streak, I'm on a six ma or a seven match winning streak. I actually am going to level to seven. I'm just going to play another Tom Kench. Obviously, this puts no traits in play. I still do not have Mythic trait in play yet, and uh, I, I would like to get that in play as well. So I'd happily play another Mythic unit over playing the second Tom Kench. But I know that I need frontline here, so I'm going to play the second Tom. And hopefully that'll just buy time with the big tanky catfish standing on there in the front lines long enough for the trick shots to uh, kill everything with all their various bouncing abilities. So that's the hope there. And so far that seems to be working reasonably well. This is a fairly close fight, but I think that I have enough here. Kate should not get off another ability. Uh, fortunately, she does not. And then now it's up to the cog and I'm going to be able to kill the cog as well. So that person is kind of greeting for perfect cog items. They definitely could have made some more items with what they have on their bench. I can tell that they're trying to greed for blue buff on on, Tom, on uh, the uh, cog wall. If they had just made Spear of Shojin on Tom, they have a sword and a tier on their bench. They could have easily just made um, Spear of Shojin for cog and they would have won that fight if they'd had that, but they opted not to. Well, also, look at what we got here. Well, well, well. I get my biggest high roll of the whole match, and I find a way at 1% odds, um, <laughs> which is just going to be fantastic for this board because it's going to do two things. Number one, it lets me play Mythic trait. I get Mythic in here. Normally, I'd have to find like Nautilus or something like that. Or I mean, I could play a cheaper Mythic unit, but I'd probably want to play Nautilus for more front line. Uh, instead, I don't have to even worry about finding him. I can just play the Hui instead as he's the five cost Mythic unit. So that's fantastic. And uh, the secondary thing is he can start painting additional copies of the units I'm looking for. And then, ah, oh, double bows. That's so good. That's what I needed. I really, really needed that. So I'm going to have him just start painting copies of Bard, and that's going to be really, really nice. Okay, so I'm going to look to start itemizing Bard. Uh, I actually sell the Sivir, which is, I, I think I sold the Sivir too early because now I don't really have anyone to put this Infinity Edge on. I have all these bow, I have all these swords and then I have these bows, but uh, I don't really have anyone to put the Infinity Edge on. By the way, now that I'm level 7, I'm going to start rerolling here because uh, I'm trying to reroll for Bard 3-star and Tom 3-star. And I'm, I can also look for like Shens for uh, Grillo's board as well. 
Uh, remember, we get so much additional gold in this game because we have the uh, Crab Rave. We all have like extremely advanced economies relative to where we would be normally. But anyway, um, I do have two out of three bards. Hui is going to paint me additional bards. I have the duplicator, the champion duplicator that came from my augment earlier. And boy, this fight's looking pretty close. Again, my front line is very sketchy at the moment, but all those trick shots are hitting units, hitting units, hitting units. And oh, it looks like we have just barely enough to win this fight. All my units are like flashing red on health there. The bard survived with like nothing. I really need to get him a rod so I can make Rage Blade. And then I've also got some items here for a potential uh, Kaisa later on, who's going to be the fourth trick shot on this board. But I don't think I can get her on the board until level uh, until I get to level um, eight. All right, so I'm trying to look at the different options here. It's not uh, heavy hitters. Healing arts is not terrible, but that's more of an early game option. I decided to go for three as a crowd because I do actually have a lot of three costs on this board. Tom Kench is a three cost. Bard is a three cost. And the uh, Soraka is a three cost as well. So that's at least three of them on the board. Uh, by the way, I'm also going to sell the Soraka so I can transfer the Thieves Club over to Teemo. I've been hoping to itemize Teemo because I think I can three-star him, but it just does not seem likely that I'm going to be able to three-star this unit. So I went ahead and uh, sold the Soraka so I could transfer over. And by the way, I, at this point, I'm like, well, I guess I'll just paint Teemo here because that'll give me three-star Teemo. I was planning on painting a bard, and I will go back to painting more bards after this, but uh, why not just get the Teemo? It, it'll literally give me three-star Teemo on the next round. <laughs> so I'm pretty, pretty pleased with that. And again, hitting the Hue at 1% odds is just a crazy crazy high roll it's going to make it so much easier to hit these uh these uh two and three cost units because he can paint me the additional copies and then oh boy once again it's another bounce fest look at all those abilities bouncing around it's pretty wild but we again we have just barely enough to win this round keep that big 10 match win streak alive and it should get a little bit easier after that thanks to having um I uh, should have three-star Teemo. And by the way, Grillo has found two additional bards. He already sent me one bard, and he's going to have an additional bard. Uh, he's hopefully helpful to get a two-star bard that he can send over me shortly thereafter. Okay, Udyr grants four free rerolls that last until used. I was like, okay, well, let's just go ahead and use them right now. There's no advantage to going to a higher level for me here. I just want to go ahead and use these. By the way, there and there's a, the bard two-star coming over. Okay, that works. Bard two, so I'm already on six bards now. And by the way, there's Kaisa, so I'll continue rolling here. But now I need to get to level, and I'll two star the Soraka. Very nice. And let's just continue using our rerolls. All right, so that's six bards, six Tom Kenches. So I'm already making a lot of progress there. I still have the duplicator, and I still have uh, Hui painting additional copies as well. So uh, I, I really need more frontline. <laughs> My frontline continues to be terrible. What I want is to get a Galio so I can take out Zoe and replace with Galio. Unfortunately, this person's playing some already has two Galios on their team. So they're taking some Galios out of the pool because apparently they're playing some kind of Story Weaver. It looks like they've got Story Weaver. For some reason, they've got what looks like a Radiant Deathblade on a Sivir who is not really uh, a strong enough unit to hold that and carry with it very well. But uh, anyway, Tom Kench looks like he tanks long enough, and then the trick shots can do their thing. And that person looks like they're dying pretty rapidly there. They're uh, not in good shape, I have to say. Uh, they'll be able to come over here and help Grillo's Shen, who has the Shen carry augment, hold on to that one. By the way, Grillo has a Hui as well over there. <laughs> Could try to make a very early Hui two-star, but um, he needs to use his Sens for... Uh, for um, hitting, having bards and Tom Kenches, not Hways right now. Now, there's a bard with a, a, a bow here. That would be pretty nice. I wouldn't mind taking that. I think my top priority was actually the Galio with the rod, though, because that would have allowed me to make a Rage Blade for um, bard. But uh, that is not an option here. So I was like, all right, well, if I can't get that, I'm going to try to get the bard with the bow. So I do get that. That's going to give me another copy of bard and another bow. Again, very, very nice here. I definitely want to make things with these bows. Bard is heavily reliant on attack speed as far as the way he goes. So that gets me to, what, six bards? Yeah, six bards. And then Grillo actually has eight out of nine Yorick, so... I can send him the Yorick as soon as I have the champion send back, which I believe is like one or two more rounds. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and level to eight here. I did this because I was so close already to hitting the uh, the Bard and the Tom Kench. I'm already on, what, seven Bards. I have a Duplicator, and I really wanted to get the four Trick Shots in. Also, I had this Infinity Edge on my bench not doing anything, and that seemed like it was less than ideal. So my comp is like hilariously unbalanced in terms of frontline and backline. I have a two-star Tom Kench and a two-star Riven, and that's my only front line. And then I have, what, like seven units on the back lines? Let's see, it's Teemo, Sivir, Kale, Bard, Hue, uh, Kaisa, <laughs> Zoe, and Soraka. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units on the back line. Two front line units, eight back line units. Okay, that's, uh, 
that's a little bit silly, but um, it got the job done there. We're definitely going to have to fix this before the game's over. But uh, we can just add more frontliners as we get a little bit stronger from here. So, uh, yeah, I'm able to keep the win streak going. Hopefully I can win one more as we go to the minion stage. There is the send coming over. So I will look to go ahead and send the Yorick over to Grillo. That makes Yorick three star. Very nice. And uh, I do find another Tom Kench in the store. I'm just econing here at the moment. But, uh, yeah, I'm making good progress. Seven bards, seven Tom Kenches. Grillo obviously helped me with the bards. I've had a little bit more luck naturaling the Tom Kenches over on my side. And then uh, I'm going to get another Tom, another bard at the start of the next round because uh, Hui is going to paint me a copy. So, I'm, 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 again, I'm pretty happy with that. And then I have the duplicator. So if I want, I can just duplicate the bard for bard three star like that. And then we can just look to continue getting to higher levels and playing more legendaries. Uh, I actually thought that, well, I, I say legendaries, but what I really want to do is get up to four bruisers. I need to play Galio. need to replace the Zoe with Galio because that will get me uh, maintain Story Weaver and get me another bruiser for Frontline. Zoe's not really doing much of anything here. And then if I can get uh, Silas as well, then Silas will get me the four bruisers. I probably should pick up the Silas here because I'm going to want to play that unit uh, to get up to four bruisers. And uh, like I said, the bruisers will just provide the front line I need. There's a Zoe, but I don't, I don't need Zoe. And there we go. Now we're going to be up to eight of the bards. And at this point, I wanted to see what I would get out of the uh, minion round. And then I can go over to painting additional copies of Tom Kench and go from there. Also did pick up the Morgana because Grillo, because he's playing Shen, he's got some, uh, get, he got some ghostly units on his board. Is Shen ghostly? I'm trying to remember if... Yes, I know he's. I know that Grill is playing into some ghostly units. Uh, let's see. Yes, Shen is Behemoth plus ghostly. I haven't played Shen much this set. All right, now here's some good news. I managed to find a, a rod here, and I was actually hoping the item anvil would have another rod. There's also an Udir, but I don't think I can get Udir on my board. Just doesn't really fit this time around, which is a bit unfortunate. Also got that Lissandra. By the way, I have like a hundred gold here, so I don't. We're just getting so much gold from the Crab Rave. Sadly, there is not another option to take another rod here, uh, because the, the core blade for Bard is actually double rage blade, and I, I actually probably should have made um, red buff there, instead of taking that sword and making a death blade on Kai'Sa, which by the way is a good item on Kai'Sa, but uh, I probably should have just taken another bow and made red buff for, um, made red buff there, I was hoping I could forge it, I don't get that, instead I get another sword, so I, I'm like, alright, I guess I'll just end up making double giant slayers, I don't really have anything else to do with this sword, so I end up doing that. I have Double Giant Slayer's Rage Blade, which is not bad, but I think that if I had had uh, Red Buff plus Rage Blade plus Giant Slayer, that would have been a superior item combo for the Bard, because Bard is just heavily, heavily based on attack speed, uh, is the way that he works. Let me go ahead and read his ability, because I've been talking about Bard, but I haven't actually covered uh, his ability up to this point in time. All right, here's Bard. Mythic and Trick Shot. Abilities called Meep Meep cost 50 mana. For the next 6 seconds, attacks instead throw 2 Meeps, each dealing physical mad damage and magic damage. So once he gets his ability off, um, he just throws Meeps instead of doing normal attacks. And I believe that this does count for his Trick Shot ability. So um, once, he, once he casts once, he pretty much has permanent uptime for the rest of the fight because by the time the 6 seconds wears off, he'll cast his ability again. Um, I could be wrong on that. Maybe he's monolocked. I'd have to double check on that. I'll watch him in this next fight and see if he's actually monolocked or not. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I believe that he is not. I guess we'll have to see here. Anyway, uh, it's time for a gift round via double up, and uh, I'm going to get a uh, two completed items from Grillo. I do not have a choice on them, but I actually get two tank items, and that's perfect. Tank items are what I need. I need more frontline here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and level to level 9, and then I'm going to put in the Silas. Silas is not going to do all that much for me just yet, but as soon as I find Galio, I'll have four bruisers. I have not had luck at finding Galios so far this game. And then I got this Gargoyle Stone Plate, so I was like, all right, uh, Silas, go ahead, take this. Why not? Um, you're not the best user of this. Galio would probably be a better user of it, but I did want it to get some use instead of just sitting there on my bench, not, not doing anything. But uh, yeah, the trick shots are kind of killing everything pretty easily. The trick shots just do a lot of damage innately. And then on top of that, remember, my initial augment means that all their abilities bounce an extra time. So every trick shot ability bounces three times now. So Bard's little meeps, Kaisa's, whatever the heck Kaisa shoots out when she uses her ability. Uh, Timo's little dumplings, they all <laughs> bounce three times. So they actually hit four targets with their abilities, although each bounce does do, uh, bounce at less damage. Uh, and at the moment, I'm painting more Tom Kenches because I'm about to hit Tom Kench 3-star in two more rounds. That is the advantage of the early Hui. He's been making me so many units. And by the way, there's another Kai'Sa. Set would be nice. I don't know how I get Set on the board, though. In order to play Set, I'd have to not play um, 
I'd have to not play four Bruiser. And for like extreme late game, that's probably better. Four Bruiser is not great in the late game, if I'm being perfectly honest. But I did want to play, and like there's Nautilus. Like I could play Nautilus plus set for, um, play like two Bruiser and then two Warden instead. And that might be better. There's finally the Gallia. So all right, there we go. Now we finally have the four Bruiser front line. So my team's pretty much come together and... Um, I pretty much can't get too much stronger than here. The one of the units that I would like to play would be I'd like to play uh, Rakan because he would give me three Altruist, which would be pretty nice. That would give armor and magic resistance to the entire team. Uh, as far as Altruist trait, like I said, this is one of the traits I haven't played too much in the set. It's definitely a late game trait. Altruist heal the lowest health ally for 15% of the damage they deal and your team gains armor and magic resistance. Uh, so right now with Ultras 2, it's not very much. It's just 10 armor and MR. It does apply to everyone on the team, though. So it, it is significant because it, it hits everybody. Uh, Rakan would give me 3 Ultras for 25 armor MR, and then Rakan would also deal additional damage. Uh, I was able to win my round. Could not quite get over there to help Grillo win his round. There's By the way, there's actually a Zaya Rakan on this uh, board, which I would love to get. So I would definitely take that if it, if it were an option. I could also take the Bruiser Emblem, and then I could cut Silas and look to play some better Frontliners. That's also a possibility here. But that gets taken, and then I really would like to get this Zyra Rakan. I'm going to try to head over there, uh, but it gets snapped up. So yeah, I was not able to get that. I could see that other player was going to take it. So womp womp. Uh, I'll just end up taking this uh, Guard Breaker, and it's not a bad last item for uh, Kai'Sa. There is, gives her a little bit of attack speed. Has some synergy with the Infinity Edge because it gives her a little bit of additional crit chance as well. Just good kind of all-around stats. All right, I'm going to get a Galio from Grillo. Uh, I was trying to see if I could make two-star Morgana for him. That's going to be two-star Kai'Sa, so that's pretty nice. Again, she is the four-cost trick shot. Very nice having her. So I'd like to try to position her so she's getting some of these benefits. Uh, the positioning is a little wonky. Again, I'm trying to make sure that my units are standing next to units that give them things. So Kale is giving ability power to the Bard and the Teemo. And then Sivir, despite being a trait bot herself, when she casts, she gives attack speed to the two units next to her. So she will give attack speed to Kaisa and Bard, which are much more important units to have happen. So anyway, yeah, this board's pretty strong. This person, Wranglers, they look like definitely the strongest person in the lobby aside from me. They have two-star Aurelia, so this is pretty close, and I definitely want to beat them before their partner comes in. Oof, okay, there we go. Yeah, that board has, that board's already level 9 is looking pretty strong there, so that was definitely the closest fight I've had in a while. Uh, there's an Aurelia, but I don't see how I get Aurelia on the board in this game. And hey, there's three-star Tom Kench, so Tom's going to anchor my front line now. And at this point, there's not really a whole lot more to roll for. I was like, all right, well, I guess I can start duplicating Galio and Huey. I guess I can look to duplicate one of them. But I'm actually going to put the Sivir on the board right now because I'd like to get Sivir two-star. And it only takes one round for Huey to paint an extra copy of Sivir because she's only a one-cost unit. She's uh, very cheap. By the way, um, two-starring her does increase the attack speed she gives to uh, nearby enemies. Or nearby allies, excuse me. So it it is it, it does matter to get her two starred because she will then buff up the attack speed of Bard and the Kaisa over there. All right, and you know to go back to a point I made earlier, it looks like Bard actually is mono locked once she he casts his ability because his mana did not fill up once he uh, his mana stopped filling up once he cast his ability until the six seconds was up. So I guess he is mono locked on his ability, but uh, he was able to get um, he was able to get the second cast off almost to be like one second after. He cast the first time. And there we go. There's two stars Sivir. Okay. So for Grillo over there, I was asking, did he want me to send him the Morgana? He said yes. And now he's getting close to uh, Diana three star. So I will keep an eye out for that. And uh, I'm just going to look to go to level nine at this point because, or level 10. Uh, it feels like I should be going to level nine, but no, we've gotten so much econ via the Scuttle Crab. We're actually going to go to level 10. Of course, we now have to deal with the actual Scuttle Crab itself. So that's less than ideal. Uh, I actually do not have a great setup for dealing with the Scuttle Crab because in order to deal with the Scuttle Crab, you want healing on your units. I really would have liked to have made a Gunblade on Bard, but the problem is I only got one rod the entire game. Literally just one rod the whole game. Bard's ideal itemization is double Rage Blade plus Gunblade, so I really, really, really would have liked to have gotten rods on him. I had the swords, I had the bows, but I only got one rod the entire game, so I was not able to make a Gunblade on him, unfortunately. Uh, if he had a Gunblade, then he might have been able to heal the front line and himself long enough to win this fight, but I do end up losing to the Crab. Again, it's not, not that unusual to lose to the Crab. The Crab is very strong. Uh, in fact, one of the other teams got knocked out by losing to the Crab, so yeah, one of those other teams just, they were on 1 HP and they got knocked out, so that's that. 
Uh, here, I was trying to figure out what I should take. I was like, you know, I think I need more front line, so I end up taking the Gargoyle Stone Plague. I think if I did this again, I would take the Static Shiv and put it on Hui, because, again, I don't have anything that debuffs enemy armor or magic resistance. So putting that on Hui and then just letting him auto-attack and debuff enemy MR, I think that that would actually be pretty, pretty decent here. But uh, that does not end up happening, to say the least. All right, I'm back to this board again. This is the person who was really strong before Wranglers. And I'm hoping that I could beat them. Let's see, they have managed to get... It looks like they have an Altruist emblem in for four Altruists, which is pretty wild. That gives the entire team uh, 45 armor and 45 magic resistance. Plus, Rakan is just like a really good unit. Like I said, I would really like to play Rakan. Fortunately, I'm able to beat their board, but uh, they have quite a few legendaries over there on their board. They already have the Aurelia two-star. If they can hit some more of their two-star legendaries, they're going to be that much stronger. Yeah, four Altruist, as I said. They've got the, what is it, they have the uh, set up there on the front lines, and uh, yeah, their board's looking pretty strong. The, uh, their partner, who has six Arcanist, four Porcelain, does not look anywhere near as strong, and I think that I have better odds to deal with them. Uh, I am on a 19-match winning streak at this point in time. I don't know that I've, I've called attention to that necessarily, but yeah, I am on a 19-match winning streak. <laughs> have not lost since uh, early stage, uh, early stage two, I believe. I don't think I've lost since stage two, so... I'm pretty happy with how this game is going. I definitely have had some great RNG in this game. Uh, the fact that no one else was contesting Bard is kind of outrageous because he's been incredibly popular recently. Ever since people realized that uh, Bard was kind of overtuned, he's been very, very heavily contested. But uh, in this lobby, apparently not. So I want to play uncontested Bard, uncontested Tom. And uh, yeah, he Bard and the Kaisa just kind of tear through the uh, enemy team. So now I'm going to come over here to Grillo's board. Do we have enough to beat this person? This person has a Tactician's Crown and an Altruist Emblem. So yeah, they've got a lot, an awful lot of units on their board <laughs> over there. And uh, we were not able to win that uh, against them combined. All right, so now the game's, the game's just about over. They're on one HP, so I would happily play something like that. I'll put in the Wukong. That actually puts Heavenly Trade in play. So I do get some stats for my team-wide benefit. But uh, that's not what I'm looking for here. We do I do manage to hit two-star uh, Silas, but I really, really want Rakan over there for my board. Uh, Zaya and Rakan is the unit I want. If I could do it, I would actually play both of them. I would, If, if possible, I would play <laughs> Zaya in the back lines, and then I'd play Rakan for the front lines. But it's a little bit unlikely that I can play both of them. I still have not seen any either of them yet because they come together as a unit. Now, this is the person who's strong again, Wranglers right here, and I'm going to make a pretty big mistake in terms of positioning. I let my Tom Kench get uh, pile drivered by that set, and uh, the set is really the anti-tank unit in this set. He will grab a unit and pile drive them, and it does damage based on how much health the unit has. So the tankier the unit that he's pile driving, the more damage he does. So that is a pretty big positioning fail. I let the set grab the uh, super tanky Tom Kench and just pile drive him right into the middle of my team. And that cost me that fight. That's why I lost that fight. I would have I 100% won that fight if I had repositioned. So that's just bad on me. I should have done a better job. And uh, that's the sort of thing that I, why I record these videos so I can go back and try to see where the mistakes are. I also 100% would have taken that uh, Zyra Khan with the Heavenly Emblem. That would have gotten me three Heavenly, so more stats for the whole team. And it would have given me the Rakan for uh, three Altruists, but that is not a possibility. So uh, I just take the Thief's Glove. I don't think the Thief's Glove is bad here. I'm still trying to find one additional copy of Huey. I'm pretty close to painting the additional copy, but nope. And then there's also a Wukong. I, Wukong is the best of what the options I had to play thus far, but still not quite what I'm looking for. So we'll put the Thief's Glove on Huey, and if this uh, match continues... I'm close to painting the two-star Huey, or yeah, the two-star Huey, and then I'm still trying to find that Rakan, but unfortunately that, that other player, Wranglis, has a two-star Rakan now, so there's only seven Rakans left in the pool, but I do have pretty good odds to find them here at level 10. All right, I'm up against the other player. This is the Porcelain slash uh, Arcanist player. Their Amumu is very tanky with six Arcanist plus four Porcelain, but the rest of the team behind it, not really that strong. This is just a game where we've had like insane amounts of loot, so everybody's board is kind of scaled up to pretty wild proportions. So even though that board I think would have been pretty good in a normal lobby. It's just we're all so disgustingly rich that it's not strong enough to get the job done. So I'm able to beat them and then that knocks out the team because they were on one HP and uh, I don't actually have to beat that other player. Although I did beat that person Wranglers two out of the last three times we hit each other and I think I would have won the previous round if I had been able to position better. But as I said, that's my fail. Just needed to have Tom Kench not get Paul drivered by set and then I think I would have won that one. But uh, it is what it is. Sometimes you make mistakes and like I said, that's part of the reason why I do these games. 
All right, now it turns out that actually promotes me to gold four, so hooray for that. Uh, right before this game, we did another game, and it was the first double up game that I had not top twoed. We came in third place. Uh, the the first and second place teams were one HP when we got knocked out, so it was super close, but we did actually not top two that one. So things are going well. I still don't love this set. I don't think this set is particularly great. It's definitely not as good as set 10, but we'll see how long my interest holds, and hope this video was still entertaining anyway. Until next time, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Hope everybody's having a great week. Take care, folks. See you again soon.